right now, without a doubt, uh, tech stocks have been, you know, really the champions of this entire crisis. And by crisis, I mean both the COVID crisis and the trade war. Uh, the real question is going to be, how can these companies weather what's to come in the trade war, uh, specifically the decoupling that's happening? And actually, not just that, but this potential lack of essential technologies, and I'm talking about things like chips and things like operating system access, um, that may result uh, from the trade war, which would put these companies in a pretty tough position because they'd have really no alternatives as it stands right now. How does this Hang Seng Tech Index then uh, differ from the NASDAQ, which has, of course, also seen a significant run-up? Does it give you a different kind of exposure to this tech space, which is perhaps more favourable for investors? Well, for sure it does. I mean, the, the, the creation of this index is really a resounding symbol or a resounding sign to the world that China is, China's markets are, tech markets specifically, are open for business when it comes to international capital. This is the best way, if you're an international investor, to get access to the Chinese tech story. Um, clearly, Chinese companies have been migrating back for some period of time, and given all the political turmoil in Hong Kong, this is a great way to put people's, put people's minds at ease and make them realize that, that nothing is really changing in the China tech story just because there's these political bumps or, uh, or just uh, technical bumps along the way with how these companies are treated in the U.S. It's Ma, what are the long-term consequences of this? You mentioned that we're likely to see an increase in the pace of this decoupling where big companies are forced to either choose between the United States and China as a listing destination and, and ultimately we're going to have a global ecosystem, however, two separate markets that play by separate rules. Is that likely what's to happen next? Well, that's what we see coming and it's, and it's already happening, right? There's already been shots, plenty of shots fired across the bow in both directions. Um, there are already effectively two ecosystems that are out there where people aligning to either side with, with, with costs and benefits of either one. Uh, roughly, that would be sort of the entire West, US, Europe on one side, and then uh, the Chinese companies on the other. One of the things that we think is very interesting about tech uh, in Asia in general is trying to figure out where those sort of countries that fall in the middle, so think about Southeast Asia, where those partner companies begin to align, how they decide which ecosystem they'll be part of, because they both have real benefits and costs. Um, but as we see it right now, what's happening in China is incredibly exciting. Um, what's happened throughout this crisis, uh, you know, it's it's a little crass to say it, but but really sort of companies like Alibaba, like Tencent, have sort of won the crisis. Their share prices are doing great, but their businesses are doing fantastically well, given what they're into and, and where people have migrated, you know, during these troubling times. Hmm. Matt, ask a great question before, and I wanted to expand on that. With regards to the draw card for companies, uh, what would attract them to this particular um, market? And uh, out of curiosity, what trends are you seeing right now in China in terms of the IPO pipeline and some of the hot sectors to watch? Well, hot sectors to watch really are part of the story that we've had uh, around the world right now, right? So we've got ed tech. For obvious reasons, so much of the world is educating from home, and there's been a lot of advancements, a lot of learnings from that process. Health tech, particularly in China, where the rules are a little bit looser uh, in terms of being able to gather people's information and use that information practically, has been a huge one. And then, of course, artificial intelligence, which is how do you run a society effectively when people are being pulled out of it uh, you know, along the way, where there's a lot of unexpected uh, bumps on the road, it's great if you have automated systems. So in China right now, that is um, by far, those are by far the most interesting areas. And companies that are, are, are getting set to IPO, if you look at the IPO list, are almost all in those areas. So that's actually pretty fantastic. In addition, you have uh, major, uh, I call them partner companies like Alibaba, like Tencent, that are driving the ecosystem uh, for their own particular ecosystem their companies to come to Hong Kong and to list, to do their IPOs here, or at the very least do a dual listing, you know, Hong Kong and mainland in order to bring people here. And those companies are immensely powerful uh, and very persuasive as both investors and ecosystem champions. So you will see a lot of people coming to Hong Kong in the near term. Uh, and if you look at the IPO, uh, you know, prospect list, it's, it's pretty deep.